Um, so I'm Angelina Fong. I'm a neurophysiologist from the Department of Physiology at University of Melbourne. Awesome. And uh, what are you doing? Are you doing any particular research of interest now? Would you like to talk about? Yeah. So what we're looking at at the moment is how the brain controls breathing and blood pressures and heart rate, and how these two systems are integrated and also how these are affected in diseases like high blood pressure and how we can actually do something to alleviate these problems, which is one of the main societal problems at the moment. Fantastic. So what's your interest in the master of science? Why is it so important? Uh, to me, it's important because I'm an educator, a researcher, and a science communicator. So knowing that science is appreciated and the literacy in science in the community is an important thing to me, that I think that if we're more literate in science and that we understand what's going on better that a lot of the controversies would wouldn't happen and that the population would also then be able to push for the politicians to have a stronger say in using actual scientific evidence for their policy making rather than just the fake news and the propaganda that gets pushed around at the moment if the population is more literate then we can demand better things of our politicians mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um, what about like the the role of science communicators? How how can they, um, I guess, get better at helping promote like uh, rational yeah. thinking and scientific value in, in larger society? Um, I think that science communicators are very important in that a lot of scientists, not a lot, but it's been an ongoing problem for many decades that we haven't reached out to the public and made it understandable. Um, we need to treat the public with respect, that they are smart people, that if we communicate what we know, how it impl applies to them, that they are smart enough to make a decision as well. So I think it is important for us as scientists and communicators um, to actually breach that gap. And not all scientists are great communicators. Um, a lot of them are very good at, well, we're all very good at what we do, but that communication, I think it's something that we need to promote more. Um, and I like to see more of our students and younger generation taking that interest in bridging that gap and us oldies. How <laughs> about science funding? Stable? Mm -hmm. for, are you um, uh, an advocate for stable funding and more funding? And more, got anything to say about science funding? funding? Stable funding is definitely an important thing. Uh, these short term rounds of funding for three to five years, if we're lucky, um, means that there is no certainty and scientists don't take uh, they don't take projects that don't give them something in that short term of space, in terms of return. Um, it means that the blue sky thinking gets limited and so I think in the long run we'll see a de deficit in the advancement and the innovations that can come out of Australian science. Um, and there's a lot of younger scientists and a lot of students now going through university where I teach, they see science as there's no future in it. Um, and so I think we're going to lose a lot of talent that way uh, because they, uh, they're they worried. They don't have a way of actually making a living, even though they love it and they're passionate about it, um, they're scared. What are you optimistic with regard to the future of science and technology in general? What do you think? I'm optimistic. I think there's a lot of interest and there's a lot of potential. There is a lot of grounds for growth and we do have a lot of talent. We just need to give them that security blanket that they can actually do something and their livelihoods isn't at stake. If they don't find them amazing innovation in the next year or the next two years, um, their whole life will be it, gone. Um, they've wasted 10 or 20 years of their lives. I think that's where the stable funding comes in. Um, and I think that there is a lot of growth and we see it everywhere, but I think that security will allow that growth to continue and actually prosper. Excellent. Thank you so much. Have you got any